Hey everyone, in today's video, we are gonna explore some firewall rules on Synology's SRM 1.3 on the RT6600AX. Looking at this diagram, this is what we're gonna be working with in this video. It's a very basic network. I have the RT6600AX. It's got two networks, the primary network sitting at 192.168.0.0 slash 24, and the IoT network, which we created in the last video, sitting at 192.168.0.0 dot 10 dot zero slash 24 and it's VLAN 10. Now I have devices hanging off of both networks. I have a laptop hanging off of the primary network at 0 0.163 and that is connected wirelessly to the primary network. I also have a Synology NAS hardwired at 0 0.225. Looking at the IoT network, I have another laptop that's wirelessly connected to the IoT Wi-Fi at 10.173 and another Synology NAS hardwired sitting at 10.15. So this is what we're gonna work with in this video to explore some of the firewall rules. Let's get started. Okay, I'm signed into the Synology RT6600AX. Let's come over to the network center and then click on local network. Here's the network we created in the last video, the IoT network. Let's click on the edit button. And here you can see when we created that network, I left enable network isolation checked. And again, that's communication between this network and other local networks will be blocked. And I'm gonna demo that for you real quick. It's isolated in both directions. So for example, if I bring up a ping tool and I try to ping from the primary network over to the IoT network, it should fail. So this is the Synology NAS that's sitting over on the IoT network. Well, so let's see if we can reach it and you can see we can't ping it. Let's go ahead and see if we can actually connect to it. And you can see with the enable network isolation, we can't even get from the primary network to the IoT network. Now let me do it the other way around. Let me switch to the laptop that's sitting over on the IoT network. And let's bring up the ping tool and let's see if we can ping the Synology NAS that's sitting on the primary network at 0 0.225. And again, you can see that we can't ping in either direction. And if I show you that I try to attempt to that Synology NAS on the primary network, if I try to get to the admin page, you can see it's just loading, 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 but it never gets there. So now that you can see that traffic is blocked in both directions, let's Disable network isolation, let's click OK. Now, if I bring that same ping tool up and we try to ping 10.15, the Synology NAS on the IoT network, you can see now we are getting a successful response. Likewise, if I attempt to connect to the Synology NAS sitting at 0 0.225, from the IoT network, I should be able to get to the management page. And there you go. So you could see now with network isolation off, traffic is flowing in both directions. Okay, so now let's go ahead and begin the process of recreating that network isolation using firewall rules. We'll start by blocking ping in both directions. So let's come over to the security tab and then up to the firewall tab at the top, we're gonna to create our first rule and we're gonna block ping from IoT to primary. So we'll give it a name and we'll call it block ping IoT to primary. Next, we'll come over and select our protocol and we're gonna select ICMP. Under source network interface, we're gonna select LAN and we're gonna click on select and then specific networks and we're gonna select network three, which is the IoT network. Because remember, we want pings coming from the IoT network to the primary network to be blocked. So then we're gonna come down to destination and we're gonna say LAN again for network interface. And we're gonna select this time, the destination is going to be the primary network. We're gonna say, okay. And then we're gonna come down to the action and we're gonna click on deny and then say, okay. And then a very important feature that I keep forgetting is to come up and hit the save button. 
Now we're gonna do the same exact thing in reverse. We're gonna block ping from primary to IoT. So click on create. We're gonna block ping from primary to IoT. We're gonna select the protocol ICMP once again. This time the source is going to be LAN, again for the network interface, but we're gonna select the primary network and click on OK. And we're gonna come down to the destination. The network interface is going to be LAN. We're gonna select this time IoT, select OK. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna click on Action Deny and click OK. So there we have our two rules, block ICMP from IoT to primary and then block ICMP from primary to IoT. And again, remember to hit the save button. Now, if I bring up the ping tool again and I try to ping over to the IoT network, here now you can see it's request timeout as opposed to the successful ping that we received up here. Likewise, if I switch computers and now I attempt to ping from the laptop on the IoT network over to the primary network, you can see here now we're also getting request timed out. Next, we'll create firewall rules to block TCP and UDP traffic in both directions. So again, let's come up to create. It's very similar to what we did before with ping. This time we're gonna say block IOT to primary. We're gonna come over to protocol and this time we're gonna leave it set to TCP UDP. We're gonna come down to network interface. We're gonna select LAN again for the source interface and we're gonna say specific networks. We're gonna select network three, the IOT network. We're gonna come down to destination for network interface. We're gonna select LAN, we're gonna click on select, and then for specific networks, we're going to say destination primary network, say okay. And then finally, we're gonna come down to action and click on deny and say okay. Now, if you only wanted to block traffic from IOT to primary, but not primary to IOT, this is all you have to do. But again, remember, we're going to create the network isolation. So we're gonna go ahead and now block primary to IOT. So let's go ahead and click on create. And we're gonna block primary to IOT. Again, we're gonna click on protocol, leave it set to TCP UDP. On the network interface for the LAN interface, we're gonna select specific networks, primary, say okay. And again, come down to destination, network interface, the LAN, select. This time it's going to be specific networks, network three, the IoT network. And we're gonna come down and we're going to say deny and click okay. And finally, click save. Okay, now that we have both rules in place, traffic should be blocked in both directions, not only for ping, but TCP and UDP as well. Let me bring up another browser window and let's try to get from the primary network to the management interface of the Synology NAS that's sitting over on the IoT network. So, you can see here, I don't know if you can see that, it's just spinning and spinning and spinning. And if I stay here long enough, it should probably return a message that the page cannot be reached. There you go, site cannot be reached. Let's flip over now to the laptop that's sitting over on the IoT network and let's do the same thing in reverse. Let's see if we can get to the management interface of the Synology NAS that's sitting on the primary network. And we're getting the same result we did just a second ago. This time going from the IoT network to the primary network, it's just spinning, spinning, spinning. And again, if I let it stay long enough, we should get the site can't be reached. Okay, so up to this point, we've recreated the network isolation. We've blocked ping in both directions. We've blocked 
TCP and UDP traffic all ports in both directions. So let's go ahead and talk about exceptions. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now there's nothing flowing between the two networks. What if you have a Plex server sitting on the IoT network? If all your TVs and devices that need to access Plex are on that IoT network, you're not gonna have any issues. But you might have a random device like your main computer that sits on the primary network that you wanna hit Plex or you might wanna hit your NAS or another device on that IoT network. You know, how do we achieve that? Well, we're gonna achieve that with the firewall rule and exception. We're gonna start very general where we're gonna open up the computer to the entire IoT network and then we'll do a couple of examples of getting granular from there. So let me switch over to the computer again. And here we're back on the router and we're in the security firewall tab and right now, Everything's blocked from before. Let me bring up, I have the Plex app on the computer. I'm also running Plex server on the Synology NAS that is on the IoT network. So let's go ahead and launch Plex. And technically we should not be able to access the movies or the music files that are stored on the server. Okay, so while the home page loads, take note that my movie folder and my music folder are grayed out and there's little yellow warning triangles there. Basically, I cannot hit my folder on the server. So if I click on the movies or the music, you're gonna see I'm gonna get a message that says I can't get to them. Yes, I can get to the home page, but I can't get to my files on that server. So let's correct that, let's fix that. Instead of moving the computer to the IoT network, which could become a pain going back and forth all the time. Let's go ahead and create a firewall rule that's going to allow this computer to access the IoT network, even though we have all these block rules in place. So let's go ahead and start by clicking the Create button. And let's call this Allow Mac to IoT. The protocol we want is TCP UDP. Under the source network interface, let's select LAN, click select, and we're gonna come over to specific networks and we're going to say network one, primary network. Very similar to what we did before. Although this time we're going to specify the IP address. So we're gonna under IP address, we're gonna say specific IP, click select. Here you could put in a single host or a subnet. We're gonna leave it at single host and I'm gonna put in the IP address of the Mac computer. Let's click OK. Let's come down to destination. We're gonna say network interface, LAN, select, specific network. We want that computer to hit the entire IoT network. Say OK. We're gonna come down, we're going to leave it set to, the action set to allow and click OK. Here's our rule at the bottom because of the order of the way firewall rules work from the top down, we're gonna to have to move that allow rule up above the block rule so that when the firewall matches this rule here, it will allow the computer to hit the IoT network, but block everything else after that. But remember, let's go ahead and click on save. And now let me bring up the Plex server while that's saving, and we should see the movie folder and the music folder become available. And there we go. So if I click on my music, there it is. And if I click on the movies, there it is. At this point, with allowing the Mac to the in entire IoT network, I can not only get to other IoT devices on that network, but I could also get to admin the NAS as well. And here you can see I can get to the sign-in page. So that's good. Let's go back to the router now. Let's get a little bit granular and let's assume we don't want to allow the device to the entire IoT network, or we do want this particular device to hit the whole entire IoT network, but maybe we have another device that we want to just give access to Plex only, right? So let's do this. Go with me here. We're going to use the same computer, but we're just going to assume that it's a different computer because we're going to use the same IP address. Let's come up to that allow rule and let's edit it. And let's go ahead and click on edit. And this time we're going to say, 
instead of allow Mac to the entire IoT, let's say we were creating another rule, we would say allow Mac to Plex. Again, the protocol would be TCP UDP. The source would be the same. It would be LAN, specific network, primary network, the specific IP address. Here you would put in the IP address of the other device. Again, go with me here. We're going to use the same device. And then the destination network interface is still going to be network IoT, but instead of leaving everything else the default, let's come down to custom and hit select. We're going to put a custom port in, and that is port 32400, which is the Plex port. We're going to hit OK. Leave the action set to allow. Hit OK. And again, let's hit save because we made some changes. And what you're going to see here is I'm still going to be able to or should be able to hit my movies and my music. No problem. But if I try to admin the NAS at this point, if I refresh the page, it's just spinning and spinning. In fact, let me show you a better representation of that. Let me load a new tab. And again, it's just spinning and spinning. And this time it's not loading the admin interface. Why? Because we only gave the device access to hit Plex on port 32400. So there you go. There's a look at playing with the firewall rules, isolating networks, creating a few exceptions here and there, depending on your needs. I really do like how Synology makes this so simple to do. I can tell you, I myself had the darnest time wrapping my head around the edge firewall with the in direction, the out direction, the local direction. It took me forever to get that concept. However, I do have that, but I have to tell you, Synology makes it so much easier. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I list here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions as always. Please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.